balance problem. Think of the reservoir as a box thousands of feet below the ground. The difference between the final and initial masses of the box across a time interval is equal to the mass flowing inside into the box minus the mass flowing out plus the mass injected through a well minus the mass that is sucked out of the well, out through the well, added to whatever mass was generated or destroyed within the box. During post blowout discharge, the in, out, and uh, generation terms go to zero, and we end up with a net mass difference delta, a, delta M equal to the negative of the mass produced from the reservoir during post blowout discharge, uh, produced in inverted commas. The discharged mass can be mathematically expressed as the integral of the flow rate with time multiplied by the fluid density. For a three-phase scenario, we have three integrals, one for water, oil, and gas. T sub P refers to the discharge period, the total discharge period prior to the shut-in, which is proportional to the extent of the ecologic disaster. Even if we do have some control of that towards the back end of the discharge period, uh, we have a massive motivation to keep that as low as possible. The WCD estimations are an indication of the flow rates in absence of direct reading, which is the likely case. So our question boils down to, is the mass removed from the reservoir delta M enough for a capping stack shutting strategy to work, preventing fracture initiation? And to be more specific, is the discharge flow rate enough for the delta M to be high enough so that the capping stack shutting strategy will work? To provide an answer to those questions, we developed a parameter called the critical discharge flow rate or q -crit. This is a value unique for a capping stack shutting strategy and can serve as an indicator on whether fracture initiation will be induced or not following capping. If the actual discharge flow rate coming from the well is higher than q -crit, then fracture initiation is not expected. The simplest capping stack shutting strategy is the single step abrupt shut-in. We start from Horner's 1951 expression for the shut-in wellbore pressure as we see here. We replace the shut-in wellbore pressure term with an appropriate fracture initiation pressure expression, which is the minimum between the longitudinal and transverse fracture initiation pressures that we can obtain using the Heimstone and Fairhurst equations from three slides ago. Rearranging for flow rate gives us a, an expression for q -crit. Delta T is the time following the shut-in, which impacts, amongst others, the fracture initiation pressures. I perform a hypothetical case study using typical deep water gas of Mexico numbers. On the left, we have the shut-in wellbore pressure built up for uh, one day following an abrupt shut-in for a well that, that has been discharging for a full day after a blowout. On the right side, we see the variation of two stresses on the wellbore radius for the same time period. With red, we have the tangential stress on the wellbore radius. And with uh, blue, we have the axial stress. The solid black line on uh, the left side, the plot on the left side, indicates the base case. Reading from the plot on the right, this corresponds to longitudinal fracture initiation at about eight hours from the shut-in. 
That is when the tangential stress on the wellbore radius becomes more tensile than the tensile stress of the rock, again assumed to be zero. If I keep everything the same, but increase the discharge period uh, preceding the shutting five fold to five days, basically, then the pressure buildup is smaller, as we see with the black dotted line, and this prevents fracture initiation from taking place, any kind of fracture initiation, for at least the first 24 hours after the shut-in. However, if instead I decrease the preceding discharge flow rate fivefold, the pressure buildup shown by the dashed dotted line will now be much higher, and this translates to longitudinal fracture initiation much faster, only about two hours after the shut-in. These sensitivities can also be illustrated using allowable stress state diagrams. During capping, wellbore pressure drops dramatically, pushing the two fracture initiation lines on the top left corner of the allowable stress state diagram. This puts them far away from the green dot here, which represents the in situ stress state of the deep water Gulf of Mexico location examined uh, for the hypothetical case study. For the base case, the red and blue fracture initiation lines shift to the right with the green dot surpassed by the red line and placed within the yellow region, suggesting longitudinal fracture initiation. For a well, uh, sorry, for a longer discharge period before the shut-in, the line shifts backwards enough to leave the green dot outside the yellow region in the, in the safe zone, suggesting no fracture initiation. And for lower discharge flow rates, the, the lines move further to the right compared to the base case even, with the green dot even further inside the yellow region, suggesting also fracture initiation. For an incremental shutting, deriving an expression for q -crit is much more complicated. We begin with Matthews and Russell's 1967 modification of Horner's equation for, uh, for a multi-step shutting. We consider a shutting strategy where the flow rate decrease, decreases linearly in n number of steps, capital N. The decreasing discharge flow rate from the well is characterized by this equation here, which when we input into the Matthews and Russell expression, it replaces all the QI terms with other terms involving only the original discharge flow rate prior to the beginning of the shutting Q. Following the same procedure as for the abrupt shutting, we rearrange the equation solving for Q to obtain an expression for the critical discharge flow rate. I show this um, procedure step by step, this derivation step by step, in my article which is published in this month's issue of SPE's Drilling and Completion Journal. Uh, however, this is the final expression. Please notice that number n appears uh, in different ways three times during this expression, highlighting the complexity of the relationship. Going back 